So, Alana, I'm gonna I'll start the recording now uh, because your face, you know, is covered by the avatar, and then we'll post it to YouTube when you guys are finished. Does that sound good? Perfect. Yeah, that's great. Sounds perfect. Great. Okay. Have a good Sounds conversation, good. guys. Thank you. Thanks. Well, um, I will start uh, to introduce myself. My name is uh, uh, Barack. Uh, Twenty years old. I've been. I, I, In Holland, uh, there is a boycott, divestment, sanctions for Israel, and uh, that's that. That are the most things that I do for uh, about this uh, conflict. If you know what I mean. How about yeah. The, what, what 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 do you do with the uh, with the sanctions issue? Um, well, we um, um, uh, mostly we go to supermarkets where they sell Israeli products from illegal settlements, and uh, um, we go there to inform the the customers about what they are buying, that it is made in occupied territories, and uh, that's the main goal to uh, to let people know uh, what what the story is about those products. And and why is that a problem for you? Uh, it is uh, it is not really a problem for me. But am I, I, what, what I, I, I like uh, uh, what I um, um, for me it is important that people uh, know what they are buying. And well, I would agree with that. Ah, go on. So that's that's the reason why we are uh, uh, staying at, at those uh, uh, supermarkets to inform the customers about. Uh, the goods they are buying and uh, where it is made and uh, what they are supporting. And, and are, is your pur is your purpose, Barack, to uh, discourage people from buying uh, products that are made in the uh, in uh, in the territory? No, not not at all. Mm -hmm. It is not. Um, it is not like that. Uh, I go to people and uh, say to them that uh, that they don't must buy it. Because it is Israeli uh, goods or, or products, but um, I want to show them uh, uh, the, 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 the story behind these products, so that they that they can take their own conclusions about uh, if they are willing to buy it or not. If you know what yeah. I mean. Okay. Yeah. No, I do know what you mean. Do you understand that when Israel uh, uh, promotes or or purchases products from the Palestinians? in uh, the territories that they are actually helping to improve the economy for the Palestinians. They're buying their products and therefore they are helping them to earn, to, to create an economy for themselves. Um, what do you mean actually? What do you mean that the Israelis are uh, buying the products from the Palestinian farmers so that they can invest in the Palestinian economy? Yes, uh, of course. They, that's exactly what they do. When 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 products come from from uh, the West Bank, they uh, yeah. they uh, they they're, they're bought from the people who who grow them, who who manufacture them, and then they, they this this infuses money into uh, the West Bank economy. This is a good thing, not a bad thing. But do you mean? Uh are you now talking about the Palestinian uh, uh, farmers or workers that are selling those products, or are you talking about uh, the uh, settlers who are? Uh, it has nothing to do with products. Oh, it doesn't have anything to do with the settlements. It has to do with the fact that when you see products that are made in the West Bank or that are grown in the West Bank uh, and are sold in stores in the Netherlands. Um, <coughs> They are they get because um, Israeli um, uh, Israeli exporters buy them from the Palestinians and therefore infuse um, uh, uh, money into the Palestinian economy. They help these people to live. They help them to survive in uh, in a uh, an economy which is not supported by their own government. Yeah, I know what you mean, but those products. Uh, I can, can, can if, you, if you know what I mean, the, the products from the Palestinians, uh, I cannot find them in my supermarket, if you know what I mean. Uh, 
that's oh, well, you different. do find you do find them in the market. It's just that they don't have their their their, their own marketing arms are not sufficiently sophisticated to be able to get their products out into Europe, for example. So what what they do is they go to the Israelis and they say, buy our products and get them out into the market, and that's what they do. So this actually helps the Palestinian economy. The problem that the Palestinians have is that their government, their own government, does not help them, uh, ha has not been very active in helping to grow the economy, and this has been going on for years and years and years. Israel is the one who is helping the Palestinians grow their economy. And they, they provide jobs for Palestinians, they provide um, uh, access to capital for, um, uh, for, for purchasing Palestinian goods. And uh, I don't know if you knew this, but um, uh, before I'm 19... Not, Go on. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about that the Israelis are helping the Palestinians to build up their own economy. By buying their products, that's exactly what they're doing. They're purchasing their product. They're pu putting money into the economy. If you have a small, if you if you have a small farm, for example, and let's say you grow uh, lemons or or uh, olives or avocados or whatever, um, you have to have a market for those things. Bananas and avocados, particularly, will go bad very very quickly. So um, so you you have to have a market for it. And um, if you don't have a market within your economy, because for, for whatever reason, um, but you want to get it out to Europe, and you don't have a marketing avenue, you have a neighbor who has a marketing avenue, uh, and they purchase it from you, that puts money in your pocket. And that means you can grow more, and you can expand your operation if you want to. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the kind of partnership that Israel provides for Palestinian farmers. It's not all bad. And it doesn't have anything to do with the settlements. Okay, yes, I, I believe you, I believe you. So, for that point, I believe you. But do you, uh, how do you think about the, the, the settlements in uh, the West Bank who are uh, illegal uh, according to the international law? What do you think about that? Because the, 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 the main uh, problem from Zionism is uh, the main uh, goal from Zionism is they want more and more land, and they are doing that by uh, uh, building settlements in the West Bank, uh, if you know what I mean. Well, I, I don't agree that that's the prime uh, purpose of Zionism. The prime purpose of Zionism is to have a Jewish state, which uh, was founded by the United, which was was established first of all by the United Nations in 1947, and then. By uh, by the new state of Israel in 1948, and and that uh, well, let me finish. And and that state was was to be a uh, uh, a, a state that was a, a sovereign state in a in a in a global family of sovereign states. And um, so so uh, uh, in 1967, when Israel was attacked by Syria and Jordan and Egypt. Um, uh, they acquired this land because this is where they were being attacked from. Uh, now the question is, you know, in, in terms of global history, has there ever been a situation where a country fought a defensive war and acquired territory and then was forced to give it back? That's one issue. This, the question of the settlements on this, pro, uh, on this land um, it is enough. First of all, I don't like calling them settlements because most of them are towns or cities. Um, they're, they're not uh, tent cities. They are, are beautiful communities like the kind that you would like to live in. Um, and and uh, ha have you been to Israel? Yeah? No. no. Okay. If, if, you, if you were to go to Israel, you would see that the vast... Um, uh, the vast amount of territory that is coming, uh, the whole, the whole country of Israel is is tiny. Um, if you're familiar with the United States, the country of Israel, all of it, is smaller than the state of New Hampshire um, or the state of New Jersey. Uh, it's tiny, but given that, if you're on the ground and you see the, and you travel the the West Bank, you will go for. Many, many, many miles, kilom many kilometers, um, to uh, and see nothing but desert, but scrub, but rock, but sand. And then you'll come to this tiny little 
enclave of homes, and um, that's what they call the settlement. The homes with the gardens and the and the uh, 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 the, the little uh, factories and the little stores. Um, it's a community like like any small town in the Netherlands. Um, so it, you know, it, when you call it a settlement, you really marginalize it because it isn't a settlement. It's a it's a town or a city. In one in one city, uh, Ariel, which has been there since almost since 1967, um, there's a a, um, a a university. What I was going to say before was that before 1967, there were no universities for the Palestinians. None, not one. And now I think there are 17. There, it's a huge number that were built. Uh, with the aid of the Israelis and the encouragement of the Israelis. Um, so education has taken a huge leap forward for the Palestinians as a result of Israeli help. So um, uh, as far as the, getting back to your question, as far as the, um, uh, the, the, these towns are concerned, um, uh, they need to be negotiated. This, this is not something that is going to be decided without both parties coming to the table. And they have to come to the table without preconditions. That's what negotiations are. Once you put preconditions on the table, they're no longer negotiations. It's a, it, it's a, it's a decree or a, or a demand. So um, Israel has to come to the table, and the Palestinians have to come to the table, and there's a clear table, and they, they list the issues, and they discuss them, and then they work them out one by one. And that's what has to be done. And and Israel is for it. That, you know, uh, to say that all the Zionists want to do is acquire land is, is simply not true. Um, they're very happy. And in fact, there was a there was a negotiation when when Ehud Barak was prime minister and Yasser Arafat, the head of the PLO and the PA, um, there was a negotiation and and uh, and Israel gave Arafat something between ninety five and ninety eight percent of everything he wanted, and he turned it down. And several months later, this was in July, I think, several months later, in September, they started the second intifada. So, you know, you have to have a partner who's willing to talk peace. But um, uh, if you, you are talking now about peace, um, uh, uh, is it, uh, one, once Israel peace, because if you look at the recent attack on Gaza, um, uh, they, Israel killed uh, Ahmed al-Jabari uh, for no reason because he had, uh, well for a reason, he had a, a, a long-term push in his hands to end the, uh, the uh, rocket attacks from Gaza into Israel so that they can talk about peace. But Israel doesn't want peace, so they, they killed Ahmed al-Jabari and they uh, attacked the Gaza Strip, what killed innocents of Palestinians living in, in, in the Gaza Strip. So I'm not sure that Israel really wants peace, if you know what I mean. So, uh, and the thing about Zionism, if you talk about Zionism, uh, it is uh, to create a Jewish state for the Jewish people. Uh, what is then the difference between uh, Zionism and racism? Because I see no difference between, between uh, Zionism and racism, because it is, um, it is, uh, um, how do you say that? Uh, it is uh, 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 clean, a cleansing of, of ethnic people living in that uh, uh, country. And in this case, those people are the Palestinians who cannot be replaced by, uh, Israel, by Jews uh, from Europe or from America. Those, those, you cannot replace the Palestinians from their homeland. And that's the that's what Zionists uh, don't want to uh, understand. You cannot you cannot just replace people. That's not possible. Not do that. And that's what what, what Israel wants. Wants doesn't want peace. After the six day wars, uh, Israel knew that uh, they could create a Palestinian state, but they didn't because they want don't want a Palestinian state. They don't uh, want to. Uh, create freedom for the Palestinians. Because after the Six Day Wars, uh, the Palestinians had no Jordanian army, they had no Egyptian army, they had no Syrian army uh, behind them. So they were uh, powerless and they could, uh, they could uh, 
uh, create a Palestinian state, but they didn't. And that's, Let me ask you a question, Vera. Let me ask you a question. But, you, you live in the Netherlands. you know the history of your country? Yes, I know the history of my okay. country. Okay. In... in, in uh, in, uh, um, in, in the 1940s, Germany marched on your country yes. and took it over. Yes. Okay. Removed yes. The, the entire Jewish population and put them in concentration camp and took over your country and your government. Now, had it not been for allies like America and Britain, you would now be living under a Nazi dictatorship. One moment. One okay. Moment. Okay, Barack, I don't know where you went, but it sounds like you left uh, the discussion. Abruptly. I will wait for a few minutes and uh, then I will leave as well. Okay, as long as I'm on by myself, I will finish the discussion by myself. Uh, Barack mentioned Ahmed al-Jabari. Uh, Ahmed al-Jabari was not a patriot. He was second in command of Hamas. Hamas has written in its charter that it calls for and its primary purpose is the destruction of the state of Israel. Uh, it also refers to those of you who are interested in uh, it calls uh Organizations like Rotary Club of uh, uh, the, the National International Rotary Club um, and uh, several other community service organizations as subversive, um, and uh, basically calls for the destruction of. Uh, there you are. Okay, you're back. Good. Okay, so let me respond to what you said, Barack. Okay, because you said a lot. One one moment. Um, okay. my, my, my PC shut down, so um, uh, maybe it will shut down for, uh, again, so I hope not, but uh, let's go on, let's go on. Okay, so let me just respond to what you said, because you said a, a great deal, and I think um, uh, there, are, there are things that, that I, I need to, to say in response. You talked about Ahmed al-Jabari. Um, uh, I don't know what piece of paper he had in his hand, but I can tell you that he was second in command of Hamas. Hamas has written in their charter that their, so their main primary purpose is the total destruction of the state of Israel. This does not make him a friend of Israel. It does not make him a partner in peace. It makes him an enemy. And he was, he was killed because he was planning further attacks. He was not planning peace. The, uh, the, uh, the attack, let me finish because I, I let you speak, so let me, let me answer your, your, your points. The, um, uh, the uh, attack which, which uh, Israel mounted on uh, Gaza was the direct result of a, an incessant um, uh, rain of rocket fire from Gaza on Israel, um, hundreds of rockets, uh, I, I don't know if you can imagine where you live in the Netherlands, but if you can imagine France sending rockets into the Netherlands uh, at that rate, 
uh, you know, it, it would not be acceptable. It was not acceptable to Israel. Israel went and took out these rocket emplacements. People died. Yes. Do you know why people died? Because Hamas puts their rocket uh, launchers in the middle of heavily populated areas. And so, it, it, and, and, and the, Israel has a something called uh, the spirit of the IDF, which, in, which is enforced very, very strictly and does not allow Israeli soldiers to kill uh, civilians unnecessarily, uh, if at all. Uh, and uh, they are severely, so, yeah, I've lost you again. Severely punished if they do, um, and so uh, they do not wantonly fire into populated areas. But the reality is that when the rockets are coming from populated areas, Israel has no choice. What Israel does in that case is to to call every. Hi, Alana. Okay. Yeah, what's going on, Max? I think uh... we keep losing. Boy, I... Yeah, yeah. He he just actually he just actually tweeted at me. Um, his, his, uh, his computer shut down again, uh, and yeah. he said he will be back in five minutes. So he must be having a few, like, you know, uh, computer issues, but, um, you know, if you... Okay, he's got other issues as well. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been following this? Um, I, I just, uh, I just, uh, jumped out of the, out of the, uh, shower, so I haven't, but, um... Maybe just, you know, if you want to... Oh, it looks like he's oh, back okay. in, It looks like he might well, be let me just, let me just fill you in. Yes. Let me just fill you in. He's part of the The Best Israel movement. And and uh, he was telling me how Israel's uh, mission, the Zionist mission, is to acquire more and more and more land. And, um, um, and, and uh, how uh, the, the, uh, the recent uh, activities in Gaza were a, uh, essentially a land grab. Um, and hundreds of civilians were killed, and so, 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 and so. So, I mean, I just want you to know where he's coming from. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I was in, I was in the process of responding when his computer cut out. Twice. Right, not not a problem. And um, you know, uh, it sounds like it's it, you know, uh, our our platform Vonvo is not perfect yet, but it sounds like the issues yeah. that are coming that he's coming into are on his end with just like his computer. So I want to say that we are. Um, I don't. I want to say I'm not. You know, uh, recognizing um, who I'm not recognizing a, a particular problem that we've been experiencing right now. I think this is on his end, but um, you know, yes, ulti I think so. ultimately, I know that you're a new user. Who is this typing? The name isn't showing up next to it. Um, one thing that I was just going to say, you know, you're a new user to um, to Vonvo, and um, you know, in in the end, just to give you a quick background, you know, we, we really welcome um, all opinions and perspectives. Um, you know, we're, we're looking to give uh, everyone a voice, um, not only around this conflict, but around other international news. And, you know, we're going to hopefully branch into sports and other topics. So, you know, I don't know if you were thinking, let's, I don't know exactly what you may or may not have heard coming into it. But, you no, know, I haven't heard anything, Max. And in fact, uh, this is what I do on my website as well. Okay. I actually post opposing opinions, although I feel very strongly about things, and I think very strongly about what I what I believe. Uh, I also post opposing opinions, and I take comments from people who do not share my opinions. And I'm also the, I think the discussion very very important. I think one of the worst things that we can do is stop talking to each other. I just wanted you to know what the discussion was about because I know you didn't weren't following it. Of course. And yeah. what I was in, in the process of doing was explaining. Here he comes. Here he's back. All right. There you are. Okay. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry because my PC uh, again shut down. But I'm sorry you're having so many problems, Barack. <laughs> I look. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to get off soon. Um, so I can't stay in this discussion. But I, I, uh, I certainly would like to continue it at some point. Um, I, I. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I, I am enjoying the conversation. And I know we don't agree on, on, on things uh, so much, but I think the conversation is very important. Okay, one last question then. If you don't yes. agree on this on this conflict, what do you think about the anti-African rally in South Tel
political leaders such as Echo Ben Ari, uh, and who were uh, shouting that the Sudanese must leave to uh, Sudan. What do you think about that? Is that not racism? Is that not no. compared to Zionism? It's, a free, it's what happens. Fuck! It's what happens in a free in a free society where people of all different opinions can express their can express their beliefs. Leave your country when they are immigrants. All to believe to, to tell you the people, the immigrants, that they need to go because uh, they are violent and they rape an older uh, woman. If one Jewish man who, who were raped uh, an older woman, then were all Jewish men uh, very dangerous for every woman. And that's just, that's the main point what I want to make with Zionism and racism because it, there is no difference between them. And oh, I think there's a very big difference. There's a very big difference, and this is a conversation we will have to have in the future, but because it's a, it's a very important Israel. one. Israel Israel is not a racist society. Do you know, for example, that there are yes. three supreme? Wait, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. That there are three Supreme Court judges in Israel. And one of them is an Arab. Did you know that? Well, what, what does it say? What, what does it say about? It the, says that Israel. It, it, what it what says does, is that it, it, it. What it says is that Israel is a democratic society, and there is room for many opinions. Just like you and I may not agree, but we are discussing. This is this is what happens in the United States. It is what happens in the Netherlands, and it ha and Israel has every right to have it happen there as well. You have people. You have people in your country who speak out very, very clearly against the threat from from radical Islam, and uh, you have people who speak out very, very forcefully in in favor of, uh, of of Islam. And you have the discussion. Israel also has the discussion, and if, if there are many people who don't agree with the demonstration in Israel. But they have the right to express themselves. That's what a free society is all about, and the, and, and that's something to fight for, not against. Are you not? Are you not trying to uh, talk the racist anti-African rally? Are you trying to uh, talk that good? Is that is that what I understand now? No, are you're not. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm not judging it. I'm saying that are the people who believe the what they, the people who have the the rally, have the right to express their opinion. And that's what a free society is all about. And if you don't have the right to express your opinion, you, you are not living in a free country. It's not racism. No, it's not racism. It's not racism because actually, no, it isn't. I'll tell you why. Israel is, an Israeli population is made up of whites and blacks. There are black Israelis, lots of them. They come from Africa. And they exist, they also come from America. And they exist, and they are real, and they are full-fledged members of the Israeli society. This isn't about race. This is about culture. And there is a major cultural difference between the, the Sudanese who come to Israel to work and the Israeli population that has a totally different culture, where some of the things that happen in Sudan are simply not tolerated. This is not about race. It's about culture, and there's a major difference. So this is not racism. This has to do with the way Israelis want to live in their country. And each Israeli has his own opinion, and each Israeli is free to express it. And that's what a free society is all about. Barack, I'm going to have to go. I'm really sorry, but I have I have uh, well, a I meeting. I understand to in your, of your words is that, uh, uh, but would you accept then that I will march here in the Netherlands to, uh, to, to, to say that the Jews from the Netherlands must go out because they are uh, a problem for, for this society. Would you accept that then? If I, if I, I would, if I would, I would accept your right to I'm say it. I, would accept, I, would, I wouldn't agree with you. I might argue with you. Um, there are those who might fight with you about it, but I'm not, I'm not going to take away your right to say it. I think it's really important that you have the right to say it. If you live in a free society in, in, in the Netherlands, then you have the right to say it. If your society is not free, and, and you're going to be stopped from saying the, the things that you believe, even though others don't agree with it, then you're not living in a free country. That's what democracy is all about. That's what a democratic society is all about. That you have freedom of speech. You have the right to express you your have, opinion. You have, you have freedom of speech, but you have you don't have the freedom to insult people. That's that's the main. Why not? 
Why not? What is the crime in insulting people? People have the right to respond. That's what a free society is. You have discussion. You have an argument. But you have the right to express yourself, and just as the person who doesn't agree with you has the right to express yourself. What's happening in our country, in the United States, is that people are saying, I have the right to speak, but you don't have the right to insult me. I have the right to insult you, but you don't have the right to insult me. That doesn't work. That's not freedom. That's not freedom of speech. But I, I really would like to continue this conversation, but I can't do it now. So I will uh, happily continue it at some later date. Because uh, this is very, uh, I think it's a good discussion, and I think we need to continue it. Okay. Really a good discussion. It was really nice to speak to, to with you. So I. I so really let's do this again. This. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. You have a happy new year. You too. I hope you. You're welcome. Bye bye.